saying congratulations on this brand new album. I've had a chance to sit down and, and take a listen, and it's a fantastic album. So congratulations. Thank you very much, man. Glad to hear it. Thank you. So this is probably the first time a lot of people, uh, especially with our listeners, are hearing of Confess. So I was wondering if you could give us a little bit of a, a history of the band, because I know you guys have got such an amazing history with the band. So I was wondering if you could tell our, our listeners a little bit about how this band has come together. Uh, actually, we started in 2010 in Tehran, Iran, and... Uh, um and at that time, I had the idea of starting a band. I just talked to a couple of my like high school buddies, and uh, they also played instruments, so they were down with it. And then I just got like 12 songs written at that time, so we started jamming over those, and uh, and at the, uh, and those songs actually became the first album. And then, uh, so everything basically started from 2010, and we released the first album in 2012, the title was Beginning of Dominion. Now, I understand, even going back a little bit further than that, your introduction to, to metal music actually came from a classmate giving you a CD. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure, the famous classmate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, actually, one day I was at school, uh, this friend of mine in junior high school, uh, he, um, he came to class and he was like, you want to hear some great music? And I was like, okay. And then at that time, I was basically listening to rap music, you know, Eminem, Tupac, Biggie, those type of stuff. And But I knew what metal is, actually. I knew Linkin Park, year, like from a year before, uh, I don't know, Metallica, you know, from years before. But, I mean, he just put the CD in my backpack, and it was like, go check this out. So when I just uh, got back home, I just played this on my PC, and uh, I just got introduced to metal. I mean, the first thing I watched was, uh, it was basically the CD that burned by himself. It was uh, like a Slipknot. Uh, live shows and you know, Pantera, Metallica, so many, I created a field, don't work. It was like all over the place. So, yeah, I mean, it just got me, man. I mean, full of energy and like vision and uh, me as a 12 year old boy, it was just so energetic to me. So, ever since, I became a fan. Now, of course, you, you had to leave Tehran and, and go to Scandinavia. Tell us a little bit about how that changed your music career as well, because that must have been like a whole brand new start for you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, the whole story was that after I got arrested and I was handed over the sentence because of the charges of blasphemy and doing it, propaganda against states in, in Iran, I mean... Uh, I decided to leave actually because I was in jail for a year and a half when I came out I was like I'm gonna fight this case out and then I just noticed that it's basically setting us as an example for the rest so we just decided to leave and uh, I just went to Turkey and during that time uh, I got some uh, email from some organizations that are working with artists who are in danger for what they published in their homeland and uh, so with that thing I got an invitation to come to Norway and in December of 2018 when I come when I came to Norway I mean of course different environment from like uh, A to Z I mean everything is very different but I think I got adopted pretty well because a couple of months later I got introduced to a bunch of other local musicians we could uh, complete the lineup and uh, we finished the album that was pretty much done, but we recorded some parts, and yeah. Uh, for you personally, though, how did that feel that you were now in a country where you were free to write whatever music that you wanted to write? You could record whatever you wanted to write without that that threat of persecution over your head. How did that make you feel personally? But personally, it's, of course, there's a the huge difference between, uh, between uh, for example, the uh, political system in Norway and the society in Norway, of course, both uh, the same in, in Iran, it's just totally different. 
And um, me personally, I think I I just answered this before. I mean, I don't really think about someone's gonna come knock at my door and asking me a question for what, why did you write this and all that. So of course, the freedom is very bold, and I can feel it. And I just try to not take it for granted and just use it as as uh, as the best that I can. Definitely. Now, bringing it up to the new album, tell us a little bit about what was inspiring you when you sat down to work on this album and, and what were you hoping to achieve with this album? Were there any goals there that you wanted to reach? Definitely. I mean, when we released the album at the beginning, when I was writing the songs, when I was bailed out from jail during 2016 to 2017, it was most like just, just to tell my story and not really knowing if I one day would be able to even release it. Because at that time, there wasn't any any idea about, you know, leaving a country whatsoever going on. So at that time, it was just maybe just me trying to fill this kind of a, um, like a catharsis or something, which at the end, it actually happened. I mean, it was very cathartic. When I released the album, we saw it that it's actually out and it's being received very well. But at the same time, I mean, uh, artistic ambition, yeah, it was like we really want this to 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 bang, I mean, to to make some sound because it deserves. And uh, I mean, we knew that musically, this album can stand out and it can um, like make a lot of people interested about the sound of a band beside of everything aside and um, so and, and at the end when we saw that we are getting like eight out of ten seven out of ten reviews from all the major resources of metal music and at the end it actually end up in the top 50 metal most anticipated metal albums of albums of the year by Mel Hammer we were like this is dream come true I and mean, this is what we really wanted for this record but not really setting the goal you know we just wanted to be heard and we just wanted to just come out strong and now we see that people can really relate to this album and it makes us very proud if we are finding new fans all over the place and it makes it even i mean opens the new horizons for the band of course and, and as a songwriter how does that make you feel now knowing that people all around the world are, are listening to your story like you said this album is your story so how does that make you feel knowing that people right around the world are now listening to your story i mean it's it's kind of strange man you know it's like as I said, this phrase of dream come true, it's of course, I mean, as any musician, you want to be heard internationally, of course. And, and, uh, and with especially with the story like this, with this caliber, I mean, it's it's just bigger responsibilities, of course, beside of all the personal satisfaction and all that, that I do not really let that to just add to my ego because I really want to stay hungry and... I just want to discover new new things in the future, of course. But um, at the moment, it feels great because uh, when you when you fight for something over seven years, and then you see that you can you can prevail all the against all the odds and all the obstacles, it makes you definitely feel great. No matter what you're doing, it can be sport. I mean, it's a sport to me. I mean, music is kind of sport, but I mean, if in sport or studying or whatever, I mean, you you can, but at the but at the same time, just imagine you're fighting with a, with a political system that is way stronger than you, and you, and you can prove them wrong, and at the same time, over the top, you you would be accepted by your own community. It's just great as a songwriter. I feel amazing that people can can like the music and just can head back to it and they ask for live shows all over the place. So it's, it's amazing. And yeah. That was actually going to be my next question. Now the album is out there and being listened to right around the world. Are, are the plans for you to, to start touring the band more? I know it's a little bit difficult at the moment because of the 
restrictions with the pandemic, but are you hoping once that's lifted, you'll be able to tour to more countries? Uh, definitely, man. You just pointed out to the biggest problem that we're facing with right now, not only us, everyone actually, and it's this COVID situation. I mean, we are having uh, even a show. I mean, in March, we're planning for a show in, in Oslo, and uh, it's probably going to be canceled because one of the guys in our camp is tested positive for COVID. So, you know, and, uh, but yeah, I mean, as soon as the situation clears out, we're definitely going to be out there and, uh, and we're going to start working with, uh, we'll start finding a good booking agent that can put us on some tours and stuff. But yeah, definitely. We didn't come this far just to be like, okay, we did it. Bye bye. No, it's definitely going to be around and, and my, my biggest dream in, the, in in my whole life, it's like the biggest of all, is just to be able to, to tour the world and just go around like different places and just play for different people. So, of course, you're going to hear from us pretty soon. Or, well, we would love for you to be able to come to Australia one day. And I guess to, to finish up the interview, what would you like to say to our listeners out there before they go out and grab a copy of Revenge at All Costs? Yeah, man, I mean, I, I love I love Australia. I know that they have fans over there, I mean. And um, I just, I would say that thanks for your support, and uh, I just hope you guys dig the new album. We just put our everything into this. It's honest, pure form of art beside of everything else. The lyrics, the music, everything comes from the heart. And from listening to it, you can really understand that. So mm-hmm. I just hope that you guys just, if, if, if you're, it's the first time that you are hearing from us, you just search us in social media and like digital platforms that you're listening to music. Just, uh, just give us a try and uh, I hope that we will see you soon.